Hey, welcome back, guys. There have been plenty of changes with Tariq throughout his independent journey thus far. One thing that has remained constant, however, is his relationship, or should I say ships, with the various women in his life. Two women in particular, Lauren Baldwin and Diana Tejada. This dichotomous conundrum our series lead finds himself in is straight out of the pantheon of his legendary father and to a larger degree, life itself. Book 2's latest episode, Sex Week, brought the romantic conflict back to the forefront and arguably further than it's ever been because this dangerous love triangle has officially made one thing clear. Tariq is going to have to choose. Not since the initial run-in between the three has there been so much ado about who Tariq should be with. We understand the terms of the engagement. Lauren is the woman of Tariq's wildest professional dreams, and Diana is the queen of his potential underworld empire. Teetering the line between the two would literally put us right back where we started in the pilot of book one. The ambitious nature of what got us to this point won't allow for such affairs if this commentator had to bet his money on it. Thus, only one can win out in my view. In today's video, we'll decide which woman that should be and provide analysis and predictions throughout. Before we begin, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and bell notification to immediately receive these videos. Also, big thank you to all of my channel donors. If you'd like to be the next one, drop a dollar on that cash app for us. Lastly, a spoiler alert is now in effect for all things power. Here we go. In order for us to properly assess the right queen for Tariq's chessboard, we must first understand his position as a king currently flipped on its head, as depicted in the opening credits, something I covered in great detail in this video. I'll keep it brief in this regard, as this character analysis also fleshes out this point. Tariq St. Patrick has lived a dichotomous life, one half raised on the economic affluence of his parents and the other perverted by street poison courtesy of his father's greatest nemesis. He understands the finer things in life as well as the grimier aspects and embraces both simultaneously. Reek doesn't exist on a myopic playing field. His experiences are vast and were set before him by four main players, Ghost, Tasha, Tommy, and Kanan. Though three quarters of his mentorship had nothing but the best intentions for him, they all played into the negative and arguably most important aspect of his reality. What I formally outlined as Tariq's street poisoning was tantamount to the apple in the garden effect, a being ignorant of life's travails, taking part of the forbidden fruit that opened his eyes and forever altered his destiny and perspective, causing resentment against his father for withholding the full picture. That resentment resulted in an underworld journey rife with pain, anguish, suffering, and ultimately death. A part of Tariq died the day Ray Ray killed his sister, and again the day he killed his father. He has yet to fully reconcile those two pillars within himself, and is devoid of the emotional availability that the average relationship would require of him as a result. He's seen too much, and his soul has many burdens upon it, much resulting from his own choices and subsequent missteps. Lauren has noticed this throughout Book 2's offerings. During their intimate moments, she's expressed how Tariq always seems so distant, so far away, so far removed. His decisions have left him with no practical room for admiration, only calculation. His mind is racing a mile a minute, even during a calm, and that factors into his disposition as well as Lauren's attraction. He's also shown himself to be a brilliant academic mind when focused, and his mysterious nature, coupled with his scholastic efficiency, has got him on the verge of capturing Lauren's affections long term. Also, Lauren isn't unaccustomed to the finer things in life. Her parents were well-to-do and arguably more superficial than Ghost and Tasha ever were. Well, Ghost anyway. Be that as it may, Tariq's penchant for style and flash would line up perfectly with Lauren's sensibilities in that regard. Remember, her boyfriend and reigning book two fuck nigga Malcolm espouses these virtues as well, just not nearly as flawless. Tariq would be the perfect mixture of what Lauren desires, an upscale academic with just the right ingredients to satisfy her curiosity. However, the burden that stands between him and Lauren are the bridge between him and Diana, the daughter of his current boss and sister of his potential adversary. Similar to Tariq, Diana has been exposed to underworld activity most of her young life. As the daughter of a criminal duo, she's even been thrust into positions that Tariq was shielded from, something I explored in depth in my St. Patrick's vs. Tejada's analysis video. She has also witnessed the rigors of gangster life through her brothers, 
the Velvet Glove in Drew, and the Iron Fist in Kane. Diana, alas, is built differently, yet perfectly, for a guy like Tariq. The hardships of murder, incarceration, and suffering aren't relatable to someone with Lauren's background and experiences, and would possibly be too heavy for her to carry, emotionally speaking. However, Diana would instantly coalesce with the weight of such shackles and provide a subtle comfort for someone who's apprehensive about resting his heavy head after a long day of balancing the crown. At their best, this was Tasha's greatest contribution to the Ghost Man, prior to his ambitions shifting away from their street-tested glue. Remember Monet's Jim Phil soliloquy in 105? A man doesn't fall in love with you. He falls in love with the image of himself that he sees in your eyes. While her intentions of conveying these words were rooted in dominance and control for her daughter in future endeavors, they're ultimately synonymous to the dynamic between Diana and Tariq. If Tariq someday chooses Diana, it will be due to Diana's eyes reflecting the glorious and darkest aspects of himself. A one-sided coin simply won't do for someone whose life is self-proclaimed to be mad complicated. It's going to require a woman who eases those complications through understanding and trust both of which were on display by Diana prior to the fiasco between Monet and DC Goofass. Tariq shares a solid bond with both Lauren and Diana, but it's the latter that's winning out in this commentator's humble opinion. Their connection is unique, and if Tariq decides to marry the streets, then he'll require a true trap queen, empathetic to his aspirations. Let's just hope for his sake, he plays his turn wiser than his old man. Thank you for watching today's video. Who do you think Tariq will ultimately end up with in the seasons to come? Lauren or Diana? And who are you rooting for based on what we've seen? Be sure to leave me your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. As always, if you liked today's video, go ahead and drop a dollar on that cash app for us, hit the like button, share it with your friends who are Power Ghost fans, and subscribe for more content such as this. This is Rudy P. Magic of Rudy P. Magic Beats, and have a blessed one until the next one. Peace, y'all.